Hi there everyone, it's Alex and welcome back. Today on Drum Artists of our Studios we're going to be taking this vintage style radio and making it fit into the wizarding world from Harry Potter by turning it into a wizard wireless network radio. So I am a fan of many fandoms, but one of my ultimate favorite genres for fandom right now is Harry Potter and the wider wizarding world. There's just something about it that really appeals to me. A few years ago, I did build from scratch a uh, wizard wireless set, roughly based off of the one that is seen in the chamber or in the room of requirement in uh, Deathly Hollows. And I used reference images from some of the, the tabletop uh, reference books you can get for the world of Harry Potter and everything. But I had to take liberties with the bulb in it. But it's a, a really cool setup. I had the idea of taking some vintage style radios and converting them into something else you might see from the wizarding world. So recently I picked this one up on Facebook Marketplace. I think I spent 25 bucks on it. And it is a it is a vintage radio, being that it's from 1989, which makes me feel old because I'm older than this radio and they consider it vintage. But uh, it is made to look like a radio from the 20s or 30s. And uh, it does still function. It's an AM FM radio that has a spot on the side for you to put a tape deck in. So it is still functioning. What I'm going to do is we're going to take this plate out, which this is actually the speaker. So we're going to be taking the fabric off the speaker, moving it to the back, and then we're going to be putting in a decorative brass mesh and adding in some vintage LED style light bulbs to make it look like it has vacuum tubes in it. Just changes it slightly and makes it look a little bit cooler than a wooden box with a floral print fabric on it. Eventually, I'm going to be taking the maker label off of this and replacing it with one that says Wizard Wireless Network. But we're gonna start by doing some work on the inside of this thing. So to begin, I've taken the back panel off. I don't have a very long wire for the speaker here, so I have to maneuver the speaker around as I work because I don't want to take apart anything that actually works properly right now. But having taken that out, I now have the open cavity going all the way down. And I've gone ahead and added in a few strips of wood trim in here that will create shelves for my bulb assembly and the speaker to set against to hold it in place. So those were kind of done off camera just to get stuff ready. So what I'm doing right now is I've got my hot glue gun heating up and this is my brass plate that is going to just get glued right into the front face of this to cover up the opening. And it is a nice enough mesh that you can see through it so you'll be able to see the bulbs, but you can't get a whole heck of a lot of look on the interior detail. So that'll just get, get glued in place. So the first thing I have to do now is I need to take this fabric off to expose the speaker to see what I have to do to the board that the speaker is actually mounted on. Okay, so I am now going to put my bead of glue in and try to glue in this uh, brass plate. So that takes care of getting the plate in. That worked fairly well. Uh, before I figure out what I'm doing with this, I'm going to go ahead and prep my electronics. So I have here, this is the board that they're going to be going on. I've got three bulbs with sockets. And it is for a, a small based light bulb. And uh, I will preface this with, I am not electrician. <laughs> so 
When wiring a simple light like this, on your fixture you will have a brass screw and a silver screw. The way I was taught basic electrical work is that brass goes to black and silver goes to white. The way to remember it is the black is generally your live wire. This is the one the power is actually going to be coming through. So black is burnt which is the same letter as brass. It all begins with B. So the black wire goes to the brass screw and the white wire goes to the white colored or silver colored screw. That's the easiest way I learned to remember which one goes to what when you're starting to do electronics. So I've got three of these sockets. They're already wired up and they're in place on my board. What I'm going to do is come in and wire all three of the black to a single black and all three of the white to a single white. That way I don't have to worry about messing with all of these. It'll make it easier to figure out. I then have a rotary switch. One turn turns it on, one turn turns it off. But I'm going to put it in with the black since everything is black. So when the switch is in the off position, power cannot be going through it. That's how a simple circuit works. Uh, you only put it into one of the two, either the power or the neutral, doesn't matter which one really. I'm sure somebody will say it does and they'll comment, but the way I learned it, it shouldn't really matter too much. It's just you put it in the middle of one of the paths because if it is broken somewhere, the circuit cannot complete and you cannot have your light turn on. So I will get these all wired up and get this ready to go in. I'm then going to have to come in here to the power cord and figure out how to cut that open to get my power wired in to the existing power cord so that it powers both the radio and the lights separate because you'll be able to turn the lights on on their own without the radio being on. So those are now wired, so that should be fairly easy for me to get in to get everything taken care of. And this can go ahead and get glued in place. Uh, you can see I've cut a groove here to make it so it will slide in past everything else I've already done. So I'll get this set in place and then we'll see about finishing up the wiring. So before I can uh, actually wire this thing up to try and get the power in, I realized I have to put the switch in place. So on the side of it here, because this is where I have the most clearance, I'm just going to drill a hole and I'm going to start a little bit larger to give it a pilot and work my way up. And then this is going to get threaded in from the back side. I'm just going to pick a spot where it looks like it will fit well. Okay, so there's my switch. I'm going to end up having to design something to go over the first hole I drilled because it's too far forward and I couldn't get it past the electronics that were already there. So now I can come in here and wire my black to one of the ends here. which will allow me to prep for getting it plugged in to the power cord. So for the sake of time and expediency, I'm just using a black permanent marker and coloring in the insides. And I'm going to do it to the front of this panel just to darken the interior of the box so that you won't see the raw wood. You're not going to be staring into this thing because you're going to be looking into the three light bulbs, but it will just make it a little bit nicer of a finish. So I've got the board colored now. I'm ready to glue it in place, but obviously before I can do that, I have to put my bulbs in. So these are the bulbs I'm using. It's a small base, and it is specifically, this is the, uh, the Fiat Electric 
LED original vintage style bulb. Uh, I picked these up at Menards. I think they're three or four bucks a piece. It's a, a 40 watt replacement bulb, but it uh, only uses five watts, so it doesn't pull that, that much power to be able to use it. And I've got three of them, and I'm just screwing them right in. I want to use these vintage style bulbs because they give, when in something like this, behind the brass, with these big, dark plastic bases on them, it gives the illusion of them looking like old-style vacuum tubes from when they used vacuum tubes and radios. And I want that feel because I want it to look old-fashioned and old-timey because that will give a better feel and look to the world of Harry Potter. So now that those are in, I'm going to set it back on its front and I'm going to glue this panel in place. So the power cord inside here had this plastic sheath on it to help insulate it a little bit where it was twisted. And I'm just cutting that off so that it's easier for me to access stuff. But this was turned around like that and then it had this clamping it down. So I'm going to have it be the exact same way. But this is where I'm going to cut and splice in to be able to get the power and the neutral to run to my light. And this is again where I had prefaced, I am not electrician. I am making this stuff up as I go. So this is where if everything I know about electrical work holds up, I should be able to just wire these in. So I've got the two that I believe are my neutral from the power cord and my neutral for the bulbs. And I'm wire nutting them together. And then I'm going to take my live wires and wire them together. And what that does is it makes power still going to the radio, but it also gives me power going to the light bulbs. So, in theory, when I plug this in now, I get light. And I should be able to still turn this thing on, but I don't get radio. So I have to figure out why I'm not getting radio. Okay, <laughs> so. Yep. Okay, so. Well, that's interesting. I successfully wired everything correctly. I've got power. Uh, the light obviously does work. It's, it looks exactly the way I was hoping it would look. At the moment, though, there's no sound coming out of it. And that is because, and all the mucking about I did with this, I managed to break one of the ends for the speaker. So now I have to come back in and re-solder that connection so that I have sound. So I wasn't intending on doing a soldering demo for electrical work because I am still not all that grand at it, but I guess we'll add that into this video. Okay, so my knowledge of electrical soldering is very basic at best. I've only been soldering for a few months. And I've got my soldering iron set up, my lead is stripped and ready to get soldered on. 
Fortunately, I already have solder on the plate and I just have to reconnect it. Making sure things unplugged is a good thing. Um, <laughs> so soldering iron, I've got my wet sponge to be able to clean and prep the tip of it. I also have one of these tip cleaners for soldering irons. And then I've got my tube of electrical solder. So my first step, again, if there are people out there watching this that actually know what the heck they're doing with electrical soldering, don't be too harsh on me because like I said, I'm a beginner at this. I've cleaned the tip of it. I've got some solder on the tip of the soldering iron already, but just going to make sure it's nice and fresh and even here. And I'm going to try and pre-tin this wire. And doing that just makes it easier to get this connection to stay. So basically all I ended up doing was with the little bit of solder that I had on the soldering iron, I heated up what was already on the contact and got it to stick. So now when I plug this thing back in, assuming it doesn't blow up in my face, which is what I always expect. There we go. So my electrical soldering worked for that. So now I've got the working radio. All I have to do is put the back panel back on and we'll see what this thing ended up looking like. So there you have it, a working wizard wireless radio set. The only other things that I still have to do to it is I have to make the plate that will replace the Thomas Collector Edition radio up here with something that says wizard wireless network. And then I have to make a plate that will cover the hole I drilled in the side. But because it's right next to where I have the rotary switch for the light, I think I'm going to have it be something like a channel select or power level or something, I don't know, but it will be some form of a plate that this knob can direct you to. But uh, that was a pretty simple build, very easy electronics. I might do an actual simple wiring a switch video later, I don't know, but uh, very simple, but it also gives a very cool, very unique look. And it's something I feel you could see sitting in the Wizarding World down in Orlando. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters. Whatever you guys are able to give each month is what helps me keep doing this stuff and getting more content out on this channel. So uh, if you're interested, check it out. Drum Artists for Studios at uh, Patreon. And uh, there will be a link down in the description. And uh, thanks for watching. This has been Alex with Drum Artists for Studios. See you next time. So that's why it pays to make sure you plan stuff out and don't just start drilling holes in something.